before Moses had walked even a hundred yards from there, the taskmaster lie dying. A legend was being born. A crowd of slaves rushed to learn what the commotion was about. To their surprise and their delight, they found slaves standing over the body of a dead taskmaster. There was a rush of excitement among them when they thought that one of their own had begun a rebellion. You are a hero, one said to the slave who was bloodied by the taskmaster's whip. You showed, you showed tremendous courage, your willingness to fight back against those who enslave us and who force us to toil is to be praised. If only more of us could move and find your courage, then we would break free from our oppression and we become free people once more. Well, the slave, who is now be called hero, was unsure of what to say. He was no hero. He had not killed the taskmaster. He was being beaten by the taskmaster and had put up no resistance. It was only because Moses was walking by and had been splashed with blood and mud that Moses had taken any notice of the mistreatment of the slave. Then out of anger, because his royal robes had been soiled, Moses pushed the taskmaster out of his way. Moses had no intention of, of killing the taskmaster, nor did he have any intention of stopping an unjust beating. The slave who was being praised as a hero also knew that Moses was unaware that he had killed the taskmaster. Now as the other slaves, and now as the slaves stood with the others, he wasn't sure what to tell them. He could take credit for killing the taskmaster and remain a hero in the eyes of his fellow slaves. But if word leaked out from the slave community, he knew that the Egyptians would torture and kill him. Or he could tell the others exactly what happened. Realizing that being a false hero put his life in jeopardy, the slave recognized that telling the truth was the wisest course of action. So he began to explain what had occurred. I was being beaten for working too slowly, and Moses was walking by. But before the slave could finish the story, before he could say that Moses pushed the taskmaster not to save a helpless slave, but out of anger that the whipping had caused his robes to be stained with blood, the slaves were already talking of their new hero, Moses. As quickly as the wind whipped the sands of the desert from place to place, the legend of Moses striking down the taskmaster to rescue the slave was spreading. There was excitement, for now there was Moses, who though raised in Pharaoh's court, would risk everything to help one of his own. The story gave slaves hope. There was now someone to lead the rebellion, for they were desperate. They wanted. No. They needed a rescuer. And this incident, or at least a small portion they had heard, gave them the hero they were now looking for. As Moses returned to the palace, the place he had been raised, the only home he had, only, he had ever known, he did not realize that his life was about to change. Without his knowledge, without his consent, he was being transformed for the obedient follower of Pharaoh to a traitor, or worse, a leader of a slave rebellion. The story of Moses rescuing the slave, killing the taskmaster, had reached Pharaoh's palace even before Moses had arrived. He could not understand the glances he was receiving or the whisper words that were being spoken whenever he passed someone. He didn't know what they knew that he was now a hero to the slaves, a slayer of oppressors, a liberator of those in bondage, unaware of the seismic shift that had occurred since he had left that morning. Moses went about his routine in blissful ignorance, though his peace and tented life was soon to be shattered. What are you doing here? Asked an aide of Moses when Moses arrived. We heard what you did and the news is spreading throughout the palace. Very soon now, Pharaoh is sure to know, and when he does, you are going to be a wanted man with a price on your head. What are you talking about? Asked Moses. Wanted for what? 
Oh, don't be coy, said the aide. Everyone knows that you struck down a taskmaster to spare a slave's life. Word has already spread, Moses. It will only be a matter of time before you are a wanted man. There have been those in Pharaoh's court who did not trust you, who always thought you would lead a rebellion against Pharaoh. It looks now as if the time has come, and those who said to Pharaoh, don't trust Moses, were right. Leave now, Moses. Run away now, Moses. Right now, if you don't escape now, you will be captured, and you will surely be put to death. There's no time to think, no time to argue. Just go. Moses couldn't believe what he was hearing. He was no hero. He was no rescuer of slaves. He didn't mean to kill anyone. All he wanted to do was to get away from the filth, return to a room, to his room, take a, a leisurely path, and prepare himself for the feast that was taking place that night. He was overwhelmed with what he was hearing. He couldn't believe that in a matter of a few short hours, he had been transformed from one whose only concern was what tunic to wear to a leader of a rebellion of slaves. <clears throat> but Moses was also aware that there were many in Pharaoh's court who resented him. His aide was right, that regardless of the truth, they would use this against him. Either he left now or he would die. Moses quickly gathered some of his things from his room. All the while, he looked at his beautiful surrounding, despairing that he now had to leave this lap of luxury. He always assumed he would live out his life in the palace, always live in this wonderful place, never having to work, never having to worry. But his life was being changed, not by his doing, not by, but by fate itself. Moses rushed from the palace, not knowing where he was going, not knowing what was in store for him, believing that he would never return to Pharaoh's palace, never return to the place that he had always called 